I've got something very exciting and this is really an introduction video to what we're going to do. So the presidential elections just happened. You may be happy, you may be upset. I don't get into politics on this channel, so we're not going to go there. But either way, no matter which candidate it was, one of the big concerns in the tech community anyways, not necessarily the rest of the population, was privacy and security. And these issues came up specifically around the time that Apple was fighting with the FBI. So I thought this would be a really good time when people are very anxious about what's kind of going on in the government, right or wrong, tinfoil hat or not. People are worried about what's happening and the privacy and the control of the government and the overreaching of firms like NSA and the hacking by Russia and other countries and just hackers in general and the security of their files, the privacy of their files. In fact, for the most part, my most popular videos happen to do with security and privacy, which I find very interesting because at the beginning of this channel, you know, it's kind of gone through different phases and I do a lot of variety of different tech stuff, but security was not one that I expected a lot of people would pay a lot of attention to, but it's ended up being one of the primary things that I get questions about and the community is really interested in. So I thought I would take a moment um, to do an introduction video to a new trial or test that I'm going to do called 30 Days of Linux. And what this is, is I've completely taken my primary machines, my laptops and everything, and I've converted to Ubuntu 16.10. Now I know some people are going to say, why don't you use Mint? Why don't you use one of the other um, distributions of Linux? And to answer it simply, I find Ubuntu tends to be the easiest Linux distribution to install with the highest amount of compatibility for drivers and things. Um, it's just a very plug and play Linux solution. There are other plug and play Linux solutions. There are ones that look different. I like Ubuntu. I know some people don't, you know, this is one of those things. One of the great things about Linux is that it has so many different distributions. If you want your computer to look kind of like a Mac like setup, you can customize it to do that. Or you can just download elementary OS and boom, you've got a Mac looking uh, desktop if that's something you're familiar with. But the reason why I wanted to do this is I think this is a great time when we talk about security for people to be considering switching from platforms like Windows 10 and we'll get into that. So what this challenge is gonna be is all of my computers moved over to a Linux solution. That's the primary solution I'm going to use. I'm not going to switch over to Windows. I'm not going to have a dual boot setup going. So here, what I've done is I took a Plexter. Uh, this is an MP8E. So this is an M2 NVMe uh, hard drive or SSD drive. It basically plugs into an adapter. And it, sometimes, like if you have a Mac and stuff, this is this is looks like a stick of RAM almost, except the connections on the end. And you plug that into adapter, you put that in your PCI Express slot, and you can get a lot faster speed. So I bought a brand new one of these to put into my primary PC so that I wouldn't be tempted to go back into Windows. So this is my sole solution, 500 gigabyte NVMe uh, SSD drive. And so you can see that here. This is what it looks like. And that's the chip. And that plugs into basically like a card and you just put one screw in and you plug that into one of your PCI slots open on your express slots open on your motherboard and it recognizes it just like any other hard drive. I wanted to do that because I wanted to try one of these outside of a Mac solution, see how fast they were. And I'm very, very impressed with the speed and you can see some of the right read and write speed differences here uh, that Plexter's advertising. I got this for a really good deal on sale. Um, Slick Deals, which is one of the sites I recommended I talked about. So I've got a complete fresh install. Now, if you're doing Ubuntu and you want to do this challenge with me, you may want to install it beside your Windows, or even a simpler solution would be to run it through a virtual machine, which I have videos on how to do that so you don't end up messing with anything and uh, you can always go back to your Windows environment. What I want to show in this 30 days is you can completely switch to Windows. Everything that you do on a Windows machine can be done on Linux, including gaming. And you'll see down here, Witcher 2, got it installed, I've been playing it, it works fantastic. This computer's got the new NVIDIA GeForce 1070, it's a beast of a machine, i7 processor, it really, really cooks. Uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, so this is a monster. 
And uh, so I didn't do the typical, you know, you can get a low end machine and run Linux on it as well. But I'm doing this with my high end desktop computer. So aside from that test, I want to talk a little bit about why I would use Linux if I'm concerned about privacy or security. So there's a couple key differences. The first is the file system and how it's structured. So in a Windows environment, you're going to really have admin rights the minute you install it. As soon as you install that system fresh, you've got admin rights. You can get into the registry. It may ask you at times, are you sure? Click yes if you want to get into some of these deeper areas. But for the most part, you have complete control and everything's kind of compiled into one. So what happens is if you get a virus or somebody hacks in your machine, they not only have access to your operating system files and your registry, they have access to all of your personal files as well. In Linux, it's a little different because your actual uh, system is partitioned differently in that you have your system files in one partition and your user files in another. So, and your login is your root, which would be the equivalent to administrator login, your root login is on a lot of distributions, number one, not even activated by default, but number two requires a completely different password and login to access in those system files. So if you got a virus or got hacked, people may be able to mess with your user files, but they're not going to be able to mess with your system files or vice versa. And that gives you another level of security that you don't have. Um, second, Linux is open source. So the advantage to that is you have thousands upon thousands of people who are contributing to these distributions to patch issues that happen with them to fix problems that utilize this and not only um, commercial enterprise level applications but also privately in their homes and everybody contributes to making linux better so if they find a problem they find a bug they find a loophole everyone's contributing really there's really good track record of people notifying when there's bugs or loopholes or issues and that gets patched very quickly as opposed to windows where they've got you know paid professionals who work on their code um, but certainly not by the thousands and there's when there's a loophole found there's really not a community involvement people are like yes i'm gonna go sell this on the underground or tell people about it so they can hack it so it's just kind of a different community perspective and the advantage of open source being so many people can view and look at the code and see that there's an issue and report that before it becomes a major issue uh, another factor in there is target size so obviously Windows is dominant as most of the, you know, private home users are on a Windows platform. And because of that, if you're a hacker, um, you're going to spend your time probably writing one for Windows. Linux users tend to be more technical and as such, it's going to be harder to trap them in a malware type thing. And again, it's not impossible to get a virus or to be hacked in Linux. It's just less likely. It takes a lot more work, but if you have a stupid user on the other end, it's going to cause you a problem no matter what. And finally, there's the privacy concern. So Windows 10, as you know, and other Windows versions, they're metadata grabbing. When you're using Cortana, it's recording the things you're doing. Um, Microsoft's getting big into the cloud. So when you're using Skype and other things, they are recording all the conversations. When you use their email, they're taking keywords out of your email so that they can advertise you. The second you install Windows 10, you're getting an advertiser's ID assigned to you and that's being used to track and build a portfolio on you. And that's the dangerous part that most people are very scared about when it comes to their privacy and stuff. Not that Microsoft itself may do anything wrong with it, but they could turn it over to government. It could be hacked. It could be used for other malicious purposes. So. No perfect security system, but that's what makes Ubuntu superior in that way and why it would be something you'd be interested in. So for 30 days, we're going to do this trial. I'm going to show you how to install everything. I'm going to show you, as you can see, I'm using it right now to record this video. So we're going to do video recording, what software to install. I'm going to show you and provide you the code to install it for gaming applications, whatever you're doing, whatever I'm doing, virus applications, password managers, how you can install it all and have that complete solution in Ubuntu. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to doing this for the next 30 days, giving you guys videos and we'll do other videos too 
This is going to be about a 30 day project, maybe longer if you guys like the videos on completely switching over to an Ubuntu solution. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about this trial. Let me know if there's something specifically you would like me to do, like a specific desktop environment you want me to install on top of Ubuntu uh, to give it a shot or any security questions, firewall questions, that type of thing. I'd be happy to help you out. So until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.